Good morning, ESM. As you probably already know, this Saturday marks the 20th anniversary of the September 11th attacks on the World Trade Center. In remembrance of this time, we're going to be looking back and seeing how these attacks affected the world. More on that after news and announcements. New personalized mRNA vaccines can be given to patients with certain kinds of cancer. This vaccine could leverage the immune system of the patient to kill the cancer by itself. Messenger RNA vaccines sparked the concept for the COVID-19 vaccine. Pfizer and Moderna both created an emergency treatment to train the body to fight off the disease. This is the same type of treatment that, that would be in the mRNA vaccine for cancer patients. After not hosting a St. Patrick's Day parade for the past two years, Clint Square is excited to announce that there will be an Irish Fest, Ar Irish Fest this Friday and Saturday. You can expect a big crowd and lots of cultural food, food and music, including touring bands, Enter the Haggis, and House of Hamill. CNY native Joe DiVoli is also on the lineup of performers. COVID precautions are in place with only one stage in the heart of the square and masks being required for people who are unvaccinated. Please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. To the flag of the United States of America. And to the republic for which it stands. One nation under God. Indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. As no students in the high school were around during the attacks, we thought it was only right to go back and find someone who was. Mr. Corbett is a firefighter for the city of Syracuse, and he got the chance to go to Ground Zero and see it firsthand. Was even alive at that point. It, it's amazing. It, uh, it seems to me like it happened yesterday, but uh, I was reminded of that this morning. My wife says, you know, you realize when you go over there that nobody was alive at that time, or if they were, they were in diapers. And it dawned on me that, yeah, it's been that long. After September 11th? Well, I was a member of the Syracuse Fire Department. Uh, when it happened, six of us went down. We, it took a couple of days for us to get there. We had to get all of our equipment together and get okayed and make sure our shots and everything were up. We didn't know what we were going to run into. But because I was a member of the Syracuse Fire Department is how I got to go. So six of us went down. The first time we went, we spent five days there. And to make a long story short, we went down there <clears throat> as a rescue team. While we were there, it turned into a recovery team, which they realized after only a few days, you weren't going to find anybody alive. So that's what we ended up doing for the next five days, was searching for people to recover them from the wreckage. Today is going to be cool and breezy with a high of 70 and a low of 55. This weekend is looking to be in the lower 80s. Saturday is supposed to be um, nice with no rain, but there will be some clouds. Sunday is supposed to be partly cloudy with a... Well, we worked with FEMA, which you see FEMA on TV a lot now. It's the uh, federal emergency management people and uh, they had these cameras. We paired up with FEMA guys. And they had these cameras, it was kind of like that. The end of the camera was on a big pole, a telescopic pole. So we went down, there was two places to this. It was called the pile and the pit. I ended up on the pit side where you went down in, you went down about seven floors. As a matter of fact, the first thing I saw when I looked over the edge was a fire truck laying on the bottom. It was down about four floors laying on its side. But you climbed down these ropes. They didn't have any ladders or anything set up yet. So you went down ropes and you took these long cameras. They were maybe twice as long as that with a camera on the end of it. And you stuck them down in all these holes. Every little void you could find, you'd stick it down in there looking for, well, signs of life or maybe somebody's clothes or something like that that you could now bring down people to get them out. And uh, we did that for a long time, searching with the cameras. It's all right, I mean, you The boys volleyball team beat Syracuse City three to nothing yesterday. 
The Syracuse football team opens up their home schedule at, against Rutgers at 2 o'clock at the Dome. And last night, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers beat the Dallas Cowboys 31-29. to uh, Tom Brady threw for 379 yards and four touchdowns, two of which went to his longtime tight end, Rob Gronkowski, and they now share a total of 100 touchdowns together. In upcoming games, both blue and orange golf teams have a match in Fulton. Tennis plays Whitesboro at 4.30. Cross Country has a meet against Verona Sherrill. Varsity football plays Central Square at home tonight at 7. And Varsity Girls Soccer have an away game against Liverpool tomorrow at 11 o'clock. And I'm Tanner with your sports. If you learned something here uh, looking back at this tragic time. Uh, but for me, Owen, and everyone else here on The Morning Show, have a good Friday.